Howdy everyone, I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin and I record all my lectures and I put them on YouTube for anyone in the world to be able to learn about data analytics, geostatistics and machine learning. So what I'm going to do right now is just have a simple whiteboard discussion of the topic of a Verigram calculation and specifically how do we work with irregular data and why do we need to use all of these search tolerances. Now just to remind ourselves what we need to do here is we need to be able to populate this equation. This equation right here is the calculation for a semi -verogram. Now I'm going to keep saying verogram in my class we just say verogram. Semi just means divide by two and what we know here is that the verogram is just one half the average square difference and average because we're doing a divide by n h which is the number of pairs that are available to us for a specific lag vector h shown right here so for this equation we're going to have to average over the square difference of a bunch of pairs so let's go ahead and calculate a verogram and demonstrate that now first i've got my area of interest right over here i'm going to go ahead and give myself a couple of data that I can work with. Now, just to keep this simple, I'll just give myself two data. Now, of course, we're going to have a whole bunch of data everywhere, but we need to identify a pair. Let's just work with two data to see if we can identify these as a pair. Now, we're going to calculate the verogram. It's a bin statistic. We'll calculate it at certain direction and distances, and it'll be bin. Now, first of all, let's identify the direction. Let's go ahead and say that this verogram is going to be calculated for the 45 degree azimuth. Okay, so 45 degree azimuth would mean that we're actually calculating in this direction right here. That would be the 0, 4, 5. Okay, azimuth. Okay, we want to work in that direction. We're going to identify certain distance bins. Let's go ahead and say our, our fundamental or elemental distance is going to be lag distance is going to be 100 meters, that's simple. So we want to calculate the verogram at 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 meters, and so forth. Okay, so 45 degrees azimuth, 100 meters. Let's go ahead and draw that. Now we've got to anchor on a data point for our tail location. Let's anchor on this data point right here. And we're going to go 100 meters. Okay, 100 meters in that direction. Now, what's happened here? We identified a pair? Nope, no pairs yet. What's going on? Well, what's the chance that two data are going to be exactly 100 meters apart in that 45 degree azimuth? Actually, if I use a very precise number of 100.0000, I can start to say that there's really a zero probability that any of my data in space could be that far apart from each other. So I'm going to say, well, let's go ahead and put a tolerance on the distance. Now, let me draw it over here. We'll say we want 100 meters, but I'm going to be okay with plus or minus 50 meters. Okay. Now, what that means is I'm going to take anything between 50 and 150. And I'll say that that gets to be counted as a possible pair to put into this calculation up here. Okay, so I'm going to do that. That was 100 meters, so I'll go 50 through 150, and now we've got this as our distance. So 150 is here, 50 is here. Now here's a problem. Now I drew the line. It looks like it's going through the point, but what's the chance that we could expect two data being exactly 0, 4, 5 aligned with each other? You know, this might actually be, if I drew the line there and calculate it, it might be 43 azimuth, 46 azimuth, and so forth. So we had a distance tolerance. Let's go ahead and put in an angle or azimuth tolerance. Okay, so I'm going to be accepting of anything that falls within, let's say, plus or minus 20 degrees. Okay, 20 degrees on my azimuth. And so now I'm willing to take anything that is within 22, 25 and 65 azimuth as counting to be in that 45. So right here, we said 45 azimuth, but effectively what we've done is we've done a plus or minus 20 on that azimuth right there. 
Okay, so now if I try to draw it, I can draw exactly what I have for a search template. And what it is, is here is my 50 meter distance. There is my 150 meter distance. I drew an arc. I hope I got a pretty good arc. This is the angle tolerance. And so I'm willing to take anything within that shape as being a pair. Okay, so now I have a template for that first lag in the 45 degree direction at the 100 meter offset. And I can take that, that search template and anchor it on any data and identify all pairs that fall within that template. Now, to further explain this, let's go ahead and extend this template to the next bin. Okay, so I, that's my 45 degree um, vector, and that right there was 150. Now, right about here would be about 200, and this would be about 250. Now, I hope I haven't drawn this perfectly, this scale, but I tried. And so we could continue to look at that azimuth tolerance. Now, look at the azimuth tolerance. As we go further away, it gets further away from that original 45 degree vector. Now you might be disturbed if you're working in a certain type of setting, you might like stratigraphic setting. If you're looking vertically, you don't want to go too far off that vector because you start to mix things that are not, should not be mixed together spatially. And so the next thing we can do is we can say, well, I'm going to put a tolerance here, which is basically called a bandwidth. And that bandwidth is going to say, I'm not going to allow myself to go too far away. Oops, sorry. I'm not going to allow myself to go too far away from that vector. And so the bandwidth will limit that, how far I can go. And so if I apply the bandwidth and I draw that next bin, the 200 bin in the 45 degree direction, we use plus or minus 50 meters, so it's going to be touching the previous bin. There's no gaps. If I'd used a smaller number, there'd be a gap. Then it would track along this line right here, the bandwidth maximum. And it would get all the way out to 250 right there. Okay, so I went a little too far with that line, but if I drew it kind of more carefully, get rid of that, get rid of that, then you can see that I have a shape, which is now the 200 meter bin in the 45 degree with a bandwidth limiting how far away you can go. Okay, so if I apply that bin and I search through my data, now let's just pretend we had a bunch more data. Here's the original data. I put data here, data here, data here, lots of data. I can take that search template in the 45 degree direction and I can anchor it on, move it, take that entire template, move it, anchor it on each point, find each possible pair, put them all together, comparing all pairs together with the equation for the semivarogram. And if I do that, I would calculate the point right here. And I should draw that in blue because that's my first experimental varogram point. Now I can go for the second bin and I'll get a point maybe right here. And I can continue doing that and I will calculate the varogram in that one direction. Now that might have been the major direction. I could also apply the same template and I could work in the minor direction, which would be orthogonal to that direction. I'm considering just working in 2D here. Orthogonal to that direction. And I could apply the azimuth tolerance. I could look at the distance, get the distance tolerance. And I could calculate that search template in the minor direction. And I could carry on and calculate the varogram. In the minor direction, I would expect the varogram values to probably be higher. Because I'm reaching the sill sooner, I've got weaker spatial continuity. And I could proceed and go ahead and calculate the varogram by binning all data in that direction. Let me draw just to finish up here. I have to draw this so I can interpret my varogram. And that right there will simply be the variance equal to the sill. The variance of the data, which is equal to the sill of the varogram. And now I can interpret it. Okay, so this was a basic explanation of the concepts of distance tolerance within a varogram calculation, the concept of a azimuth tolerance, 
And the final one was this idea of a bandwidth to restrict how far I can go away from the vector when finding pairs. All right, I hope this was helpful to you. With all of this, you should be ready to go ahead and calculate varigrams with um, GSLib or Petrel or um, any other type of modeling software or even in my package in Geostats Pi and Python. All right, I hope this was helpful to you. I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin. I record all my lectures and put my content out to support my students and working professionals and anyone who wants to learn about science, spatial data analytics, geostatistics, machine learning. All right. I hope this was helpful to you. Take care.